Everyone Needs a Little Hero. Chapter 4. Hero's Little Conversation. Hero spent the next few hours contemplating his interaction with the little girl, Maggie. It hadn't occurred to him that humans were just as dangerous toward each other as they were for someone like him. He found himself asking so many questions about what their lives were like, borrowers only being able to see snippets of what went on in their daily lives. Despite living among them all his life, Hero soon concluded that what borrowers truly knew about humans was only a fraction of what really went on. They got their food from some place which Hero thought he heard being called the market. But what did that look like? This building was big, but was it the biggest? What happened when they were really sick? Where did they go? Hero stopped in his tracks on his way when he remembered his promise. Sam. The train of thought going from sick people ended with thinking about Sam. Was he okay? Did the coughing stop? At the moment, Hero was at the floor joists between where he could turn and go back home or make his way to the human boy's room in the other apartments. His parents weren't expecting him home anytime soon. And he did promise. But was he ready? Sure, Sam promised he wouldn't say anything as long as Hero came back. But there was that instinctual fear that Sam might have simply needed time to get things together to keep him. Hero shuddered at that possibility. He nervously glanced about to make sure no one was watching before looking back through his bags and supplies. No food rations, and just a little water. But there were things he could use to escape if he needed it. Hero paused at that thought. Would he even have what it takes? to escape if one of the humans he was trying to help captured him? No, he couldn't think about it like that. And the humans he was helping would never try to capture him. At least, that's what he thought optimistically as he turned down the hallways to Sam's room. Hero slid down the line he secured from the ceiling to his original perch on top of the bookshelf once he made it to Sam's room. The human boy was currently sitting on his bed with something covering his ears and a device in his hands. The borrower couldn't help but smile at the sight. Sam seemed to have color in his cheeks again, and him being distracted let Hero belay to the top of the shelf without being detected. With a quick whip of the thread, the hook came free and landed on top of the shelf for Hero to use once again to reach the bottom shelf of the bookcase. The bold borrower had determined that he wouldn't get too close just in case while also upholding his promise. He never promised he would get close enough for Sam to touch anyway. Also, being on the bookshelf let Hero be close to eye level with Sam, another chip in his favor, and Hero loved chips. The bookshelf was set up so there were shelves in the top half of the furniture piece and a cabinet below. Where the top and bottom met created the perfect lip for him to stand, which is exactly what he did. The bed was just beside the bookshelf, and the bedside table next to it, creating an interesting L shape. Hero slid down the braided line until he finally reached the lip. The line stayed where it was near the back of the bookshelf, near the wall, for easy access, while Hero tiptoed to the middle of the bookshelf lip and stood as he looked past the enormous blankets and comforter at Sam. The device in the human boy's hands was black, with one side red and one side blue and seemingly possessed all of his attention. All of his attention, that is, until he sighed heavily, shoulders slumping, and set down the device in his lap to stare at the ceiling. Sam went to raise the device again when his eyes caught sight of the small boy he just saw yesterday. Immediately, his hands flew up to his head, dropping the electronic box in his lap to push his headphones from his ears onto his neck all while not breaking eye contact with Hero. Hero watched the boy jolt into action, which made his heart jump and start mercilessly pounding his chest. The borrower boy held his breath reactively as that strange rectangular block was set down and the things from Sam's ears were removed. His skin felt as though it were on pins and needles and squirmed under the human's gaze. That little voice in the back of his mind warned him to run and hide, but Hero instead stood his ground. Heroes were supposed to be brave, after all. Still, he was more than thankful that Sam was the one who spoke up first, 
not knowing exactly what to say to him now that he was standing in front of him. Whoa, you're actually real. These were dangerous words that sent chills up Hiro's spine. As his panic and nerves attempted to overthrow him, Hiro took a calming breath and smiled. Hello, Sam, he said, trying to speak up. I... <clears throat> I'm back, just like I said. Sam pulled the cushioned device off of his neck and set it to the side along with the colorful rectangle. Then, quite suddenly, began scooting down the length of the bed toward Hiro. The rapid lunging motion made Hiro's heart skip a beat, and instinctually he attempted to take a step backwards. However, his back was already pressed against the back of the bookshelf. The smile on his face must have changed to a look of sheer and instinctual panic because Sam suddenly stopped advancing when he was a couple of feet away. Sam's eyebrows scrunched on his face as he squinted to better read the facial features of the sandy brown-haired, green-eyed borrower. The human boy now looked confused as the slightly panicking hero tried to get a hold of himself. Are you okay? asked Sam, now holding still. Hero swallowed dryly, a lump trying to restrain his breathing, and forcefully nodded. Yes, stammered Hero. Just startled, that's all. I didn't know you'd get so close so fast, but it's okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. Sam looked mildly taken aback, a partial grin tugging at the side of his mouth. You're apologizing to me? After admitting I'm the one who spooked you? Wow, you're weird, said Sam. Hero felt his ears warm, and he averted his eyes. No one said being a hero would be easy, he thought to himself. Sam looked away and, after a nervous chuckle and seeing Hiro's reaction, continued, Nah, I'm the one who should say sorry. I just didn't know if you were real or not and wanted a closer look. Sorry, and, um, thanks for the other day, finding my inhaler. Hiro felt the hair stand up on the back of his neck. His tensed shoulders suddenly seemed lighter, like a weight had been pulled off of them. Thanks? I gotta thank you, my first one? The fluttering nervousness and panic almost instantly evolved into excitement as Hiro looked back up in time to see Sam looking at him. This time, his eye contact felt reassuring, and a small swell of pride grew in Hiro's chest. Hiro couldn't stop the ear-to-ear -ear smile he now had on his face. You're welcome. I'm just glad I was able to help in time, replied Hiro, hands clasped around the straps of his backpack. Yeah, me too, chuckled Sam. The boy cocked his head to one side and eyed Hero again. So what exactly are you? I mean, where did you come from, and why are you so small? The human boy's rapid firing of questions put Hero on the spot, making him feel a little nervous again. Hero had already come up with a few things he shouldn't say for the protection of his family and his kind, but he wanted to be honest at the same time. I, well, I'm from here. I've always been the size, but I'll get taller soon. Maybe as not as tall as you, but taller for me, replied Hero, glossing over the first question, which seemingly went unnoticed by Sam. Wow, so you've always been... Sam used his thumb and index finger to mimic Hero's height. Hero nodded. Yep, but I'll get taller soon, reiterated Hero. Sam bit his lip and nodded. So, what are you called? Like, what are you? Hiro hoped he wouldn't have to answer this question, but Sam seemed intent on knowing. He didn't need to know about borrowers. He just needs something to call me. At least, that's what I hope, anyway. Uh, well, I'm a hero, said the green-eyed boy. A hero? asked Sam. No, well, yes, I'm a hero, at least I'm trying to be, but that's also my name, Hero. Sam gave the borrower boy another curious look. You're a hero, and your name is Hero. Don't heroes have to be, you know, big, with capes and stuff? I mean, you don't have a costume or powers or anything, asked Sam. Hero bit his lip before puffing out his chest and standing just a little bit taller. It doesn't matter what size a hero is. A hero is anyone who can make a difference to someone else. And that's exactly what I'm doing. You don't have to have a cape or be big. 
There are people who don't have those things and help every day, said Hiro firmly and proudly. Isn't that hard for someone like you, though? How do you even get around? Is it with that hook thing I saw you with last time? Asked Sam, drinking in Hiro's answers and giving him every ounce of his attention. Hiro nodded. Yeah, I use it to get to the ground. I have to climb from place to place, and it isn't that hard once you get the hang of it, replied the borrower. Sam looked at him in complete fascination and awe. Wow, that sounds dangerous and really cool, muttered Sam, now glancing away from Hero for the second time since its arrival. I wish I could do stuff like that. Well, you can. I mean, it's like I said, you can be a hero too, encouraged Hero with a thoughtful smile. At this, Sam shook his head. Mm, no, not really. I can't do all of the climbing and stuff, plus my asthma gets in the way of pretty much everything, muttered Sam. A hint of frustration in his voice. Asthma? What's asthma? Hero's bubbling curiosity from so many unanswered questions couldn't be contained. He asked me a lot of questions. Maybe he could answer some of mine? Hey, Sam, sorry for asking, but what's asthma? Asked Hero. Sam glanced back up at his newfound green-eyed friend. You've never heard of asthma? Asked the boy, to which the borrower shook his head. Wow, you're pretty lucky then. Asthma is just a thing I have. It means I have trouble breathing if I get too excited or if I breathe in dust or things like that. There's a lot that happens, but mostly it's just a breathing thing. Wow, I couldn't imagine not being able to breathe. So you can't climb or run or anything? Asked Hiro. Sam shook his head. No, not really. The doctor said I could grow out of it, but that might not be for a few years. Doctors? Hiro hadn't realized he asked the question until Sam started to answer. Yeah, they work in hospitals and take your blood and listen to your heart and breathing and give you medicine to take so you can get better. Hiro felt the color drain from his own face. Do they take your blood? Do they give it back? Or do they just keep it? At this, Sam started laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's one way uh, how they tell what's wrong with you. They look at your blood. They don't give it back. And don't look so worried. It's just a little bit. Hiro had to admit he was completely fascinated. The thought of just looking at blood from a scratch and knowing what was wrong with someone was astounding. Humans were really incredible. So, a hospital is where you go if you're sick and need to see a doctor? Asked Hiro, to which Sam nodded. Yeah, it's not fun, but sometimes you get a sucker at the end, so I guess it's not all bad, replied Sam. Do you not have doctors? Hiro shook his head, his sandy brown hair flopping back and forth slightly. No, but w I don't get sick too often, so it's not a problem. Hiro hoped Sam wouldn't notice his partial slip-up. Lucky, murmured Sam. They sat in an odd silence for a minute or so, at which point Hiro suspected it was time to leave. Well, I'm glad you're doing better now, Sam. Um, I'm sorry, but I have to go now, said Hiro, taking a moment to readjust the pack on his back. Sam looked instantly disheartened. No, don't go yet, pleaded Sam. Can't you stay for a little bit longer? We could keep talking, or I could show you my game, or get a snack. I don't know. I didn't tell anyone about you, if that's what you're worried about. Uh, do you really have to go? Hero, bombarded with so many new and exciting options, wasn't quite sure how to respond. He knew he needed to leave, and that he shouldn't stay for too long. But Sam seemed like he wanted someone to talk to. Well, started Hero. Since you didn't tell anyone about me... I guess I could stay a little longer. But then you have to let me leave. I have more hero work to do. Sam, elated, grinned broadly. Great, uh, which one do you want to do? Asked Sam. Hero thought for a moment. He knew Sam had a lot more questions, and Hero had questions too. But he didn't want to give too much away. Um, why not show me your game? Prompted Hero, as he sat down on the bookshelf lip slipping his pin and backpack off to the side. Sam nodded and reached over to the small rectangular device he was holding earlier. 
The motion was so quick it made Hero's head spin. He could only imagine how fast Sam could be if he put his mind to it. Sam hesitated, glancing at Hero before asking, Is it okay if I get closer? That way you can see the screen. Hero waited a second before giving his permission with a brief nod. Sam's smile returned as he turned round his immense back to Hero and scooted backwards until he was against the bookshelf like Hero's back. What was once two feet of distance changed to two inches, but this time didn't unnerve Hero like it had before. Sam was safe. At least that's what Hero believed about the human boy. For the next half an hour, Sam explained the levels of the game. The borrower learned this thing was called a switch and had lots of games on it. One with cars, one with little rings, and one where you had to solve puzzles on a farm. It was a nifty little device, and by the end, Hero felt a pang of sadness that he had to leave. This time, Sam didn't resist, and instead offered to help Hero leave instead of climbing to wherever he needed to go. Hero had to admit it was tempting to not have to scale the entire top half of the bookshelf. But just the thought of stepping onto a human palm made his insides weak with nervous butterflies. Hero thanked Sam for the offer, but elected to climb instead. Sam was obviously disappointed, but understood. It was perfect timing. Sam's parents just arrived and were calling his name. The human glanced back at Hiro and gave a small wave. Bye, Hiro. Uh, will I see you again? I hope so, replied Hiro, as he tugged on the line to make sure it was secure. Tomorrow? I don't know. I'll come back as soon as I can, I promise. Satisfied with the answer, Sam nodded, pushed himself off of the bed, and left the room for Hero to ascend the line and vanish into the walls once again. The experience was a success in Hero's mind. Talking to a human was still very scary, but Sam seemed to understand Hero wasn't a plaything, and he hoped it would stay that way. Hero had heard stories from others about humans tricking borrowers into coming out, talking, showing themselves, before being captured or persuaded to stay. Hero knew he was young, but he hoped he could make the right decision and stay vigilant.